to another episode of KSP 101. This is episode 22, I believe, where we will be constructing a new space station core to put around orbit of EVE in preparation to complete a couple missions that we prepared in the final moments of the last episode picking right back up where we left off here in the VAB. We are planning to put that in orbit of EVE so that we can complete the primary contract for the World Record Society, the series of contracts that we have been basing this tutorial series on, to rendezvous two vessels in orbit of EVE, and then, we'll, then we will take the station as well as the other vessel that we send to it to Gilly land on Gilly, deploy the breaking ground science, and complete our landing and return from Gilly. But before returning from Gilly, we will redock around Gilly and complete this contract, as well as rendezvousing, docking, and transferring curvils between two vessels in orbit of Gilly. And at that point, we should be done with the EVE system outside of landing and returning from the surface of EVE which will be covered in later episodes, I presume. It all depends on the contracts, but without further ado, let us begin constructing this new KSS-2, loosely based on the prior KSS-1 model that we sent to do our missions around um, Duna and its moon, Ike. So let's start by grabbing the smaller RC-001S Remote Guidance Unit. We'll just set that to heaviest part since it has a reaction control wheel in it. And we are going to make this relatively simple. It's not going to be a very large station core. We're going to grab this Mark 1 Crew Cabin. And we're using it because it supports two Kerbals. We only need the facility to support five Kerbals, which once we launch the land and return mission to Gilly. That vessel for that to dock with this around E before moving them to Gilly. It will be a three Kerbal command pod added with these uh, two slots here that will make for five and fulfill the prerequisites for that contract. So let's go ahead and continue. We'll auto strut that to grandparent part then we will place a reaction control wheel up here above that and set it to heaviest part for a little added mobility. And then let's go down to our utilities. Make sure there's nothing here that we need just yet. Before we do that, let's also go ahead and grab this Clampatron shielded docking port and place it up top here. We'll auto strut that to grandparent part. Then we need to place some lights so that we can see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and open that so we will know where we're going to place the lights. We're going to place those lights on this side. Hold the two shoulder buttons and use the D-pad to aim them up a little bit. And set those to radial 2. And since this will be in the EVE system, let's turn these lights on. Lower the green level down a little bit. And then we'll lower the red level down just a hair to make it a nice deep purple to denote that this is going to be an EVE station. Let's go to our move tool and move this in just a tad bit, raise it up just a tad bit. There we go, looking good. So there's our lighting for our docking port there. Let's go back to the place tool. Don't believe there's going to be anything else we need from the utilities menu, so let's then go to our science. We will add a little science to this just in case we need to knock out any small space around contracts to um, get a little bit of cash in the future from that. Let's place this here on the opposite end to keep our symmetrical balance with our mass on this. And then we'll move on to our communications section and grab some relays to place on this since it is going to be an autonomous vessel 
it is going to need to connect to the relay network to maintain control. We'll place two down here and set those two ground parent part. And we're also going to need some communitrons to assist in maintaining the connection. We will try to place those in between the relay dish and the docking port. We'll place those here and then extend them and see what that looks like. Not very good. Well, the windows aren't necessarily a thing that will matter, so we'll just place those here instead. And then we'll close this. Alright, so that takes care of our communication needs. Let's take care of our power needs now. It is going to be in space, so we're not going to have to worry about dipping out from power too much. So we'll just place that here, giving us a thousand on our battery rating, as well as the 15 from this, putting us at 1015, which should be okay. Let's grab these 1x6 photovoltaic panels. We'll place those, say, up about here. That should be fine. Let's auto strut those and extend those to make sure they are clear of these communitrons. We also need to make sure that that's set to radial 2 and that it is also set to grandparent part, which it is. That looks fine. Let's close those. Let's close these communitrons back up now. We'll put some onboard solar panels on here. Three over from the center of that side. Place it at radial 4. Looks like we need to move it over another space, so let's go ahead and do that. That looks a little more balanced and very good, so that takes care of our power needs. don't believe there's much else that we're going to need. Let's open our engineering report. The hatch obstructed is okay. They'll be able to transfer and transfer from it. Otherwise, everything else is fine. Let's save our progress. Now we need to add some RCS fuel. We are going to need a decent little bit, so we'll just take these, set them close to the center, I'd say about here, and radial to those so we get about 100 mono propellant. Set those to root to, or auto start to grandparent part, and then we will move those into the vessel about that far, so it's nice and clear and contained within that. We are going to take another docking port, we're going to use this one and place it at the bottom and set that to grandparent part on the auto strut. We're going to copy these lights, place them down here on the opposite side just in case we ever happen to need to use those. Make sure that those are set to radial 2. Looking good. Let's move those in much like we did the ones up top. Move it down a hair. There we go. Save our progress. Now it's time to finish this off by putting the RCS thrusters on this. We'll put it according to the center of mass. We'll put a set up top and a set at the bottom. So we'll place those about here for the top. Looking pretty good. Let's actually move those over a few spaces. One, two, three. We'll displace those there instead. That's much better. Now we just need to find an equivalent space to put those down here, which is looking like it might be a little difficult to find an equivalent space. Let's try putting those, say, here. Then we'll just have to move these down just a tad bit relative to the center of mass to try to match the other RCS thrusters. That's the location related to the center of mass. I believe that should be fine. They should not damage the lights at all. So we'll move on. There's our core. Now let's copy this and place it here, radial 1. And copying it, it will be auto started automatically. Now we're at 2.8 tons at the moment. 
This is where we are going to build the fuel tank stage. Let's put a reaction control wheel here, set it to heaviest part, reaction control wheel, sorry. And we will grab this adapter, because we are planning on making this a wolfhound stage. Let's auto strut it to grandparent part. And let's grab the next adapter and auto strut it to grandparent part. Let's keep an eye on that mass. Let's go down to our Rocco maxes and grab the X216 and place it there. We'll auto strut that to grandparent part. And let's grab one of these smaller ones and see where that puts us on our mass. After we put the wolfhound on and set the wolfhound to root part. So that puts us at 26 tons. We still have a little room to work with. Let's remove the wolfhound, remove these two tanks. Let's try to grab this Rocco Max X232 and then put the wolfhound back on and see what that puts us at. Still have a little more weight to work with. Let's put these back on, take this off, and then remove this and put it back here. And I believe that's exactly where we need to be. So we'll take that, make sure everything is auto strutted. We need to auto strut this to grandparent part. The rest of this is fine now. now let's grab our probe core and move the vessel up. And move back down. Make sure we got rid of that one fuel tank. We did. Very good. Pretty sure we did at least. Looks like we did. Cool. Alright. Let's save our craft. And we are going to add some more RCS. This is a mistake that we made last time. We're not going to make that mistake again this time. Let's set that to radial 4 down here. And then we'll set it to radial 4 up here. And that'll help with our RCS control. And it won't rotate the vessel as much when we use it this time. Now, it's time to build the transfer vessel. We'll begin by grabbing a TD25 decoupler, placing it here, auto strutting it to grandparent part. Looking good. Let's also go ahead and close this docking port and turn off these lights. Very good. And now we can continue. Let's also make sure to place that there with the engine. Now let's build the skipper stage. We are going to go down to the Rocco Max parts, grab the 200-32, we'll place it here. That looks good, but before we continue, let's move that and put a larger reaction control wheel here, set it to grandparent, or heaviest part, sorry where we're only using one of those, and auto strut this to grandparent. And then we need to grab another Rocco Max tank. We're going to grab the 200-16 smaller one, place it there, auto strut it to grandparent part, and we'll place our skipper there. And we'll set that to root part. 61.8 tons, that's good. Let's go ahead and copy from the decoupler down, then we'll remove all of that, and just copy this, place it here, set the top one to root. The other one will be set to heaviest part already. And we'll just put a jumbo Rocco Max tank down here, and finish off that tank by putting the 16 down here, as well as a 8 down here. And then we'll put the mainsail there at the bottom of that. That will be our central stage. And then we are going to asparagus stage this time, instead of just placing four directly on it here. So let's begin the asparagus staging by finding the center of these tanks and then placing that in the center at radial 2, grab another set and rotate over, 
placing them there, radial to, and setting these to grandparent port. Then we will grab another jumbo tank, placing it towards the center of these. Once we have our placement centralized, we'll just grab another one and rotate over, do the same thing on these. Make sure that those are nice and even and centered correctly. They are very good. Let's set those to grandparent port. Before we move on, let's also save our progress. Then we will finish off the staging for these by grabbing that, copying it, and placing those around like so. Then we just need to strut up and fuel line up and stage up the asparagus staging. Let's check the mass that we are currently at on those outer stages. We may add more. See, that's 36 tons. Adding this makes it 45 tons. That's 49.5 tons. Plus the engine on top of that 49.5 puts it at 58.5 tons. So we can still spare a little more. And we are going to take advantage of that by adding another set of rocket maxes. We'll just set this to grandparent and then copy it, placing those there. Now we just need to make some minor adjustments. We'll grab this fuel tank, lower it down until it's centered with that decoupler again, about there. Make sure to do the same thing to the other side. About one more down, maybe another down. Okay, there we go. Now those are nice and level with one another. Well, actually, one more down. Now they are. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now we just need to strut up and fuel line this, but we also need to remember to put the reaction control wheels on this time. We'll place these first, setting those to heaviest part, copy those, placing them there, then we'll copy them again. Put the set on top of those, set to root, copy that, put those up top here. Now it will be difficult to strut that, so we're just going to go to our structural parts and get this adapter, placing them there, auto strutting those to grandparent port, popping and placing there. Now we can begin strutting this. We'll grab a set of struts, and we're going to the central stage, placing about here, radial 4, and we'll strut that to the tip of the top of those. We'll set another set of radial 4s, under those RCS thrusters about here and put those at the center of this part and then grab another set and first we're going to place those here and find out how high they can go and after we place them at the tip of how high those can go we'll zoom in, grab those and set that to radial 4 and then go back down here and place it on all four of them together at once to make that nice and simple. And then we just need to strut those from the top, center, and bottom into the central stage. So let's find the center of that there. Set it to radial four. We'll find the central part of the top of that stage. It'll be in line with that. We can just place it right beneath it. Let's go to the bottom now. Find the bottom most portion of the central stage, set it to radial 4, and then line it up with the center of the bottom of those outer stages. Now we have those done. We just need to add a couple more struts to the central stage by doing this here, finding a nice central spot on those outer stages to place these, I'd say about there. <coughs> Do the same thing in between the decoupler and the bottom of the central stage here. Radial 4. Find the center. And then place them about there. Looking good. 
Now it's time to strut these outer stages together. We'll start from the bottom, find a center here. Go to the other side, perpendicular, about there. We'll go up to where we can find a center of where we put those struts towards the cent central stage there. And then we'll bring it over nice and perpendicular to the center point there. We'll go up to where those are strutted. Do it again. Just make sure we're keeping these all in line. Okay, so we'll place that there. We'll find the center of this stage. Or that tank, I mean. Put that there. Keep in mind we're going to have to do the same thing to the other side once we're done, since these are forcing radial 2, since they are going to be asparagus staged. Now let's put these here, place that there. Now we just need to do the same thing to the other two tanks. It'd be a little easier to find our placement now that we've already placed them on the other side. Let's go down, find that, we'll place that there. Go over here and do the same thing. Nice and perpendicular. Or parallel. Whatever you prefer. Let's do that same thing here. That looks good. And then the last set down here at the bottom. Let's place that there. Strut to this side. And now we just need to set our fuel lines. We'll begin by getting rid of this stage first, so we'll line it into this tank, and we'll rotate over and move this over one, two, three, and set it into that central stage. That takes care of that. Let's save our progress. Now we just need to place our inline stabilizers. Our launch stability enhancing stabilizers towards the center of mass there. We'll rotate, do the same thing over here. Then we can lower the vessel down to the ground. Make sure we're set to radial one. Let's save our progress. Grab that probe core as it is our root part. Lower it down. Once it touches the ground, we'll pop it back up just a hair and check that out, make sure it's good, looking good, and for the sake of stability I am going to add some more struts where this begins to get a little smaller, we'll set that to radial 8, and we will put those about there, Let's see how that places, as long as they are all making points of contact that's good, let's add just a few more sets of those. Place those about there. That'll be fine. Good enough. Let's put those last set, uh, the last set of eight there. We'll strut those up to about there. And as long as all of those have points of contact, they will be fine. Looking good. This is ready to launch. We just need to check our staging now. Make sure these are together. Let's grab that central stage bottom engine, place it under those. Let's grab these, make sure they are on top of those. And we just need to make sure that we are decoupling the proper tanks in order. We need to make sure these are going off first. So we'll take that and pull it down above that bottom stage. Then these will go off. Make sure those are correct. Good. And then we will decouple to our skipper stage, which is right there, and there's the decoupler for it, so let's bring it down below the engine. And now we're staged properly. Let's go ahead and save that. We want to make sure no kerbals are on board. Very good. Return to the Space Center so we can set up our launch window and get this thing into orbit around EVE. We are back at the Space Center. Let's go to our tracking station. 
before we continue on, let's make a quick save to update in case anything happens. Head into our tracking station. <coughs> then we'll set up this trajectory real fast and do our launch from the MUN. Let's go ahead and activate the time warp and wrap EVE around until it is in line where it needs to be. Much like every episode where I do this, I will continue to explain it in every episode for anybody that is skipping some episodes and finding something more tailor-fitted to uh, what they need as a tutorial where they are in the game. So we're going to make sure Eve is at the edge of its orbital line, where we can draw a line straight to Kerbin which is easily seen with the relay network. Once it goes from the inside of Eve's, Eve's orbit to the edge of its orbit and is in line with Kerbin, we will cut our time warp and then zoom in a little bit with our focus on Eve, but we'll get to that here in just a moment. Once that's nice and close now, let's prepare to reduce our warp close it, put our focus on Eve using R1 or L1 or the left shoulder buttons on the Xbox. Now we can see just how much more warping we need. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Once we are there, let's cut the warp, refocus on Kerbin, see where the MUN is. The MUN is about... Yeah, it's on the opposite side of where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and warp it over to the other side. Or at least close to, not all the way. At the edge of its orbit, drawing a line to Eve. Let's stop it there. We'll manually finish it the rest of the way once we launch this vessel and put it in orbit around the Mun. And line Kerbin, the Mun, and this vessel all up with Eve and we'll begin our transfer from there. Update the quick save so we don't lose that transfer window in case anything happens. Go to the launch pad and go down to our new KSS-1. It's actually cheaper. Oh, no it's not. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm easily 400 credits more, so not bad. Alright, so let's hold X. Make sure there are no Kerbals sneaking on board. Let's launch that from the MUN. <clears throat> we may extend this episode. I only have about an hour and 45 minutes left until I have to go out and take care of some things, so... There's a half hour left on this episode. Mm. We may be able to pull off uh, another third episode separate from this one today. Depends on how quick we get to Eve and prepare everything. So let's go ahead and launch at about two third throttle. Should be fine. Once we pick up to about maybe 50 meters per second, we'll go sideways. Vessel is nice and stable. Very good. Once we are on that horizon mark, we will lock our SAS there. And prepare to go full throttle. Let's go to our map though and check our apoapsis out. And then we will slowly bring it to full throttle. And we will wait for that to hit about 50,000. Let's check our Delta V out as we do this. So, we should have enough Delta V to get that to 50,000, most certainly. Once that wraps around and hits about 50,000, we'll cut our engine about there. It's a little more than I wanted, but that works. Now, on our way to the ferry apps, let's go ahead and extend these communitrons. Once we get these communitrons highlighted, not 
sure why they're not highlighting. There we go. Alright, let's get those highlighted and get these solar panels highlighted. And then we'll extend all four of those. As well as turn our lights on so we can see a little bit. Now let's extend these. And we should have plenty of power and communication with this now. So let's go ahead and lock prograde. And then we will make sure that we are above 5,000 meters so we can time warp over to the apoapsis just a little behind it so we can readjust the prograde once we arrive. wait for that to readjust to the prograde mark. Make sure we still have time to reach the apoapsis and circularize. Looking good. I'm going to rotate a little bit. I like the symmetry and balance of the vessel while I'm doing anything really. Once we are there and we are right on top of the periaps, we will begin our burn slowly increase our speed in preparation for this. Wait for the periapsis to pop up so we can keep an eye on it. Slowly making our orbital burn now. And that's almost there. There we go. Let's do a quick save. Update our quick save. Now we need to zoom out. Find Eve will be over here on this side of the sun. Set it as our target. Zoom back in. And we need to finish getting the Mun where it needs to be in its orbit. Or we can draw a line straight to Eve at the edge of the Mun's orbit. And we'll wrap this vessel around one more time after this one. So it's where it needs to be on its orbit. Let's go ahead and stop it about there. Let it go back to prograde and we should see the target mark on our nav ball. Very close to the prograde mark. Once we are locked on the prograde we will time warp ahead just a little bit more until that prograde mark starts to enter our target mark or vice versa I mean the target mark will enter the prograde mark. Once it's starting to dip into there, we will cancel the time warp, exit time warp mode, and zoom out while it's locking back on to prograde. Until we're about this far, we'll begin to start our burn. Also keeping an eye on our fuel, so we are ready to stage when necessary. Here in a few hundred delta V. We'll have to do that. Let's go ahead and zoom out so we can keep an eye on our trajectory as it moves in towards Eve. We should have enough to make that point of contact on Eve's orbital line, I would say. We can keep an eye on the G-force to make sure as soon as that G-force dips down there, it'll be time to stage. For now, let's focus on Touching that line up there. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and burn just a little more. Okay, there is our point of encounter and contact. We'll burn it just a little closer. Almost have a direct approach. Okay, there we go. Now it's time to time warp out of the Mun sphere of influence. Let's go ahead and do that and prepare to head towards our ascending node there. <coughs> we will do that now. Begin the warp there and set this to anti-normal so that once we arrive we can realign ourselves. We should be very close to E by the time we reach that. We should not have any communication issues. 
Looks like we're going to dip in below Eve and then come back around to it. But that's okay. Just another example of how we can do this compared to all the other launch windows and launches that we've had. Once we are lined up with that anti-normal mark on our nav ball, we will continue our warp to the ascending node, try to be right on top of it, about there. Let's go ahead and warp. Once we arrive, we will begin to correct our degree of inclination relative to Eve, keeping an eye on that and waiting for it to hit zero. And it is time to stage. Let's cut our engine and do that real quick. Exit warp mode and stage. Let's go ahead and try to boost away from those a little bit. Go back to our map. Highlight the ascending node and continue our correctional burn while keeping an eye on our separation as well. The closer we get to zero, we may have a direct encounter with this and have to zoom in on E to finish correcting it. We'll find out. Three, two, Cut that and bring it in nice and slow until the descending node wraps around close to that encounter or closest approach node. Let's cut it right about there. Close enough. Very good. We will then burn retrograde, I believe. Still plenty of fuel on those stages. Looking good. We may even be able to see Eve if we look close enough point at the sun, then look to the right of the sun, and look for a glistening little dot. Not seeing it. I don't believe I see Eve. Let's zoom in on our vessel and try to find out where it's going to be. Let's set our focus on the KSS. Okay, so Eve is going to be close to the big white star here and that red one diagonal to it, which is over here. So if we were to see Eve, it would be around there somewhere. I don't... I think I actually do see it right there over top of that star. It's very tiny though. Looks like yes, that is where it is. Huh. Cool. Okay, anyways. Let's um, narrow down our approach there. Okay, so we need to be pointing prograde. Let's realign ourselves. Since we do have a little bit of rotation going on there and our stability, once we reach the prograde mark, I'm going to deactivate SAS and reactivate it and then lock back onto the prograde mark from there. That way we can try to reduce that wobble a little bit. waiting for that now, and deactivate the SAS, turn it back on, and then lock back on the prograde. That should reduce the wobble that we had significantly. And it's time to go ahead and make our approach and encounter with Eve, narrow it down, cut it off once it dips down below 100,000 a little bit, then we'll narrow it down nice and slow until we get that encounter. We have that encounter, we will then cut our engine off. Uh, we don't really need to cut it off because it is still moving in nice and slow. So let's increase our speed just a little bit. We are coming in on the wrong side. We need to take it to the other side of Eve. So we'll let that burn until it wraps around and then cut our engine. Let's try to bring that in. Actually, no, we don't really need to bring it in now, do we? We are trying to make our way out to Gilly. Let's bring it out further to about where it will be halfway between Eve and Gilly when Gilly is here. So about 5 million meters or so, I would say. There we go. Okay, now let's save before we manually time warp ahead one notch on the time warp marker up there. Did not really affect our periaps, so let's go 
go ahead and time warp over to it to where we are a couple minutes behind it, give or take. About there, should be fine. Let's go ahead and time warp and set ourselves to retro ahead of time. And we have entered the EVE system. Looking good. Let's refocus on our vessel. <coughs> Zoom in. Highlight our periaps. Open up our resource menu. And once we are locked on to our retrograde mark, we will time warp ahead until we are about 30 seconds behind that. Exit our time warp mode. And prepare to warp to about here. Let's go ahead and do that now. Once we arrive, let's check our Delta V out. Let's lock our SES back on and off. Couple to go away. Keep doing that until the wobble stabilizes and then lock back onto retro. Alright, and let's begin our burn. Go up to full throttle. Watch our G-force meter just in case it dips down and we need to stage in the middle of all this. We've been burning for about 15 seconds once we reach the period, so we can burn for another 15 and still be okay. We're just waiting see that Appalachians pop up. Got about maybe five seconds left of burning before it becomes slightly inefficient. Okay, now we're starting to reduce our periaps at a higher rate of speed that will increase the more we burn from here, but that's okay. Once it reduces down to 5.1, we will cut off as it wraps around, slowly decreasing it about there, looking good, we will save, let's check our staging though, we may have actually needed to stage already, nope, we still have a little bit of fuel there, plenty of fuel for what we're planning on doing as well, in fact, we're looking good there, so let's um, make sure that we did do a quick save, let's head back to our space center, Now it's time to prepare the vessel that we're going to be sending there to dock with that, as well as landing on Gilly and returning from Gilly. We still have roughly 17 minutes left if we're trying to cut this off at an hour. Should be able to at least prepare this vessel, and we'll launch it in the next episode after a short break. I have about an hour and a half to spare, so that works. Go to the BAB, see what we have to work with. This would be a relatively quick, simple build. The key thing is to make sure that we have that three Kerbal command pod and all the breaking ground science that we are going to deploy on Gilly. Gilly requires a decent amount of Delta V to make orbit around it, but not much more Delta V from there to, to um, land on Gilly, make orbit around Gilly from the surface, and to leave Gilly. Um, okay, so we don't even have our first EVE series craft yet. Let's go ahead and make a new one. And it'll be our E1, I believe, for our EVE series. Let's see, D1... We have our R1s down here and our M1s. So yes, it's time to make the E1 the only other E-class vessel we will be doing will be when we land on EVE and try to return from it much later in the series. But for now, let's grab that command pod. <coughs> we'll set it to auto strut to heaviest part. We'll put our docking port up top. It needs to be this one so it can dock appropriately to the empty docking port. We'll set the two grandparent port. Let's 
get our RCS thrusters and place those about here. Radial 4. Let's grab some RCS fuel. We're going to need a decent amount. So we'll grab these and set those to radial 4 about here. Auto strut those two ground pound part and then grab the move tool and push those into the command pod. There we go. Now we are planning to return this vessel. So we need to put a heat shield under this. 2.5 meter radial 1. Set it to ground pound part. Now let's go down to our utility menu. Let's grab these radial shoots. We'll set two, one over this way, radial two, and one over this way, radial two. Set those two grandparent part. We are going to need a little more, or we are going to be adding a little extra mass to this, but first let's place this here at radial two. Set it to grandparent part and move it in one space. Like so, then we'll move it up one space as well. Let's make sure that's not going to interfere with this docking port though. It may or may not. We may need to just go ahead and move it down just a hair again before moving it back in one. That'll be fine. Okay. Now let's add two more radial shoots. We are going to place those about here and set those to grandparent part. Make sure those are not going to interfere with one another. Let's grab the two larger ones. Place those there. Move those up above the radials. That should be good. I'm a little weary of those radials being there, so I'm actually just going to set those here and copy them and move these over on top of this window. We're not really going to be using it anyways. That should be okay. <clears throat> now, let's place some lights up here. Make sure those are pointing inward so we can light up our docking port. Get rid of the green so it's a nice purple since it will be an E vessel. Lower this down to about 75 or so. And then let's move those lights in a little bit, like so. Make sure it's not obstructing our command pod. We'll just put those about there. Maybe. We do need to maybe test this, I suppose. Let's uh, turn those off, close our docking port. Let's continue building the rest of this first, though. Let's see, I don't see anything else in the utility menu that we need just yet. Okay, we need to grab the cargo storage units. We'll set this to radial 3 about here. Check the sides, make sure those are okay. This might interfere with our RCS pod, our thrusters, so let's move this down below the radial parachute there. And once we move these in, we'll get a better look at how that will may or may not interfere with the RCS thrusters. I believe that'll be okay. Okay, so we'll just put those there. We'll open this one first, placing the Communitron, the Probe Control Station, or Experiment Control Station, and one photovoltaic panel there. And we'll go to this one and put our science in it with the GUEB monitor. The weather analyzer we can't use, but we can use this Iona. Uh, blah, 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 the ionographer. We'll place it there and we'll place the photovoltaic panels for those here and in this we'll put the backup photovoltaic panels. We'll put two in and we may consider using a Grand Slam passive seismometer which we'll place in there as well. Now let's go to our science. <coughs> this will be a radial 4 so we'll put the temperature thermometer there. We'll grab the seismometer and put it here. And we'll grab this grab max and put it here. We'll top it off with our barometer on 
this side over here. Let's grab our mystery goo and place it under the windows here at radial 2. Auto strut to grandparent part. And we'll move those in one space. And one space should be fine. That's all the science we're going to take with us. Let's go to our electrical. Grab these photovoltaic panels. Put those about here. We'll have to move that and the goo up one space. Set those to grandparent part. Go to our move tool. Move that up one space and then move these up one space as well. That will allow us. If not, we'll just go to our place tool. Just drag those up a little bit like so. Looking good. Just need some batteries now. Don't really need too many. We'll just grab these. Set them on the windows at radial 2. That'll give us 800. More than enough. We'll move those into the pod. Like so. Alright. Let's save that progress on this vessel. I believe that's all we're going to need for this vessel. We just need to test how this is going to operate and land once it gets back to Kerbin as well. We'll just... Um, Take a decoupler TD25, place it under here, auto strut that to grandparent part, we'll place a reaction control wheel under that, heaviest part on its auto strut, let's stick the smallest uh, Rocco Max tank we can find under that, and then we will grab, let's see, it's uh, 109 tons, so we can just take, say, one of these skiffs, we'll put it under there, set it to root part, let's save our progress, and we'll put our pilot in there, and Jebediah will be the test pilot for this. Let's launch it from the main launch pad so we can get some atmospheric testing done. want to make sure that it descends to a splashdown or to the surface at a proper speed and that we can use the command pods hatch to exit the vehicle. Other than that, everything else on it should be fine. And then we'll go back and finish creating this vessel. time warp until we can see what we're doing. Alright, now let's test it out. Slowly increase our throttle. We're going to test it on land. If it can land on land, fine. If it can splash down, fine. Once we're fuel tank, we'll start to go sideways a little bit towards the 270 side of the nav ball. And then, once it's at about half fuel, We'll make sure it's directly on top of the 270 mark and go full throttle. Let that burn up. Let's lock our SAS about there, go full throttle. It's handling that G force and aerodynamic pressure pretty well. So far, so good. Let's get ready to decouple. In 3, 2, 1. Set ourselves to retro. Looking good. Plenty of control. Let's activate the drug shoots. Do our time warp. <coughs> well, where is the sun? It's on that side. Let's rotate it. So that we land with that side facing the sun. Once we get close to the surface, we will activate the main shoots. Three, two, one. And then once we get really close to the surface, let's deactivate the time warp right about now. We may lose that heat shield. It'll act as a buffer to protect the command pod. Looks like we'll land just fine. Okay. So now let's make sure we can EVA. Looking good. Let's climb back on board. That looked a little funky, didn't it? 
try it again. EVA. It's a little funky, but it still works. Okay, so can we actually access this from here? Not sure if we can or not since we're not using a scientist. No, we can't grab those from here, but we'll be on Gilly. It won't matter. Won't even need any ladders either. Uh, let's get back on board and revert this to the vehicle assembly and finish creating this vessel. <coughs> we have our command pod. It'll return just fine. It has all of our breaking science on it, our breaking ground science on it. RCS, docking port, lights. We just need to build the Gilly landing stage. But before we get to that point, let's build a partial return stage. We'll place... Let's see... We'll place this fuel tank here. I'll just strut it to grandparent part. And we'll put a poodle under there. Set that to root part. And then let's put a decoupler under that. Set that decoupler to grandparent parts. And we should have enough reaction control, honestly, so we won't add another one. We'll just add another one of these tanks down below that. And then add one of these tanks below that. And then set the wolfhound below there. Still have a little bit of mass that we can afford to use or add on to, so let's go to our landing gear now. This will be our ghillie landing stage. Let's put these three spaces over from the center about there. Set it to radial four. In fact, we may just go, yeah, let's just go radial four. Use the move tool to try to move these down just a little bit below the engine nozzle. Say about there should be okay. We'll also move it in one space forward, like so. Go to our place tool. Set it to deploy shielded and enabled and retract those. Looking good. Now we just need to make sure our staging is still correct by doing that. Save our progress. Let's take a TD25 decoupler. Stick it under that wolfhound at radial 1. Set that to grandparent part and let's raise the vessel up by grabbing the command pod to about here I'd say. Now for the skipper stage, let's put one of these here is set to heaviest part. Let's grab the larger Rock Max tank, the 32. See where that puts us. Okay, so we can maybe add one of these 16s under that. And then we'll put the poodle on. Or not the poodle, but the um, skipper. Let's see where that puts us. That should be fine. As long as we're under 65 tons. Not too close to it. We're at 64, so it should be fine. I'll set that to grandparent part. Set this to grandparent part. Let's copy this. Place it under there. Get rid of this. We'll copy this. And then change the top one to root. And the bottom one is already set to heaviest since we copied it. Make sure that goes off with that skipper. This goes off with that wolfhound. Looking mighty fine. Now to just try to estimate what we're going to need. See, this will be to get us to Gilly once we separate from the station, unless we take it with the station. But uh, this will be for landing on Gilly and reorbiting and rendezvousing back up at the station and also to refuel it once we reach the station and begin our journey home using this to finish the journey home so we just need the transfer stage to Eve now and then we'll take it from there 
put this jumbo here, put the 16 under it and the 8 under that, then we'll auto destroy all those to grandparent part. And we'll stick our mainsail under that. That'll be our central stage, as per usual. Set that to root. We are not going to asparagus stage this. We are, however, going to add outer stages, but we are only going to add about two. We'll place that at the center of the stage, set up the radial two. Auto shut that to grandparent part, grab the jumbo tank. <coughs> and place that towards the center of that decoupler there. Auto strut that to grandparent part. That weighs 36, so let's add that to make it 45 tons. And then we will put the skippers there for this vessel. And that should be enough to get us to Eve and make orbit and rendezvous with that station and transfer it separately to Gilly if need be. For now let's now head to here and put a couple of those here set to heaviest, a couple more set to root, and we'll go to our structural parts, place the larger adapter up top like last time here, setting that to grandparent port. Grab our struts. We'll start with the inner. Put that about there under the decoupler. Grab another set. Put those in the center. Take those up to about here, I would say. And we'll place the ones on the outermost portion of those outer stages. About there. Go up as high as we can get. And then place those there. Once we get them nice and centered, like so. And then we just need to strut into the inner stage itself. Let's place those there. Zoom in on that fuel tank. Let's find a place to set those. We'll set those on the reaction control wheel up here so it's a little more even looking. raise up a little bit so we can get a better view of that. Like so. And then we'll place those there. And then we'll go down to the bottom. Do the same thing. We might need to add one more set though. After we place these here we will do that. Just in case. Let's go to the side. And we will find the center and then move it over one, two, three. We'll place that in the center here. And kind of in line perpendicular to the radial four portion of the central tank side there. We'll do the same thing to the other side of this tank. Let's see, let's move it in one, two, three. That should be about the same, but just in case, let's do it from here as well. One, two, three. Three. Okay, that's better. Let's make sure it's in line with the other side. And we'll move it in to about there where it was with the other one. That should be fine. Looking good. Now we just need to get our fuel lines and set those to where they go into the inner tank from both sides. Radial 2, just above the struts on this side, I'd say. Should be fine. Alright, so there's that. Looking good. We do need to add two more sets of struts though. We're going to place those up top, much like we did down here. Let's put these the center portion of that, put it in between the black portion there and the line there. Let's do the same thing on the other side now. Put those there, place that about there. That should be good. Now we just need to check our staging 
well first we need to put the launch stability enhancers on then we'll check our staging after we also drop the vessel down a little bit let's find our center of mass very placeable spot there let's uh put that there rotate over and put them there on the center stage looking good now we can just lower the vessel down to the ground and then pop it back up out of the ground a little bit looking good now let's set a set our staging make sure it's correct we'll put these together and we'll grab that central bottom tank engine underneath there put these two up above it i don't know why it's doing that that's kind of funky let's go away from it and then go back in there we go problem solved regroup those okay those go off and then leads to that which leads to that which leads to that and the rest of that is fine we're looking good okay all right there's our first direct eve mission vessel which will be for deploying breaking ground on gilly's moon which we will do in the next episode uh for now i'm going to return to the space center do a quick save, set up the launch window, and then I will return after a short break, and I will see you all then. Thank you for watching. Hope this has been helping or helpful. Hope you have enjoyed the series. Looking forward to wrapping the last of our Eve missions in this next episode, hopefully. And I will see you all when I return here shortly after a very quick break. Once again, thank you for watching, and goodbye.